I've run over a thousand Pathfinder sessions in Foundry, all of them professionally. Last video I showed you five Pathfinder tree macros you couldn't run sessions without. I do recommend you watch that video before you watch this one. This video is going to show you five more. Which is going to bring us to a total of ten macros. Is that too many macros? Some people would say it's not enough. Remember, most of these macros come from the pf 2 workbench module, so install that. I've put timestamps below, and if you found these macros useful, consider liking and subscribing. Macro number one, treat wounds and battle medicine. You weren't healing without this macro, right? Right? Oh god. We're gonna go to the compendium in the top right, type in treat wounds, and the one with the red cross should show up. Drag it to your macro hotbar and then assign it to your players. Their players will also need to drag it out. Here's how to use a macro. Make sure your player has the macro in their macro bar. Then select the character that is doing the healing. Target the character that's going to be healed by hovering over the token and pressing T. Then click on the macro and it should pop up. It's going to give you selection to treat wounds or battle medicine. If you're trained in that, you can select the train DC and you can also do a DC modifier, although I wouldn't mess with that. Click on treat wounds, click on the roll button and there you go. Kara just crit. Don't forget to also click on apply treat wounds immunity to Valeros, which gives him treat wounds immunity for one hour, which now means you need to keep track of time. Check my modules video for a super cool module that allows you to track time and foundry. Troubleshooting. Message number one. You need to select exactly one token as a healer. Make sure the token that is healing is selected and has a highlight around them. Error number two. You must target at least one token. Make sure the token you're trying to heal is targeted. Error number three. You can't treat wounds without healer's tools. Make sure you have healer's tools in your inventory. This macro can also be used for battle medicine and allows for alternate checks like natural medicine and healing plaster. And that's a treat wounds macro. You're gonna need it after each battle. Hopefully you have somebody with medicine trained in your party. Macro number two, recall knowledge. Oh my God, what the hell is that thing? Come on gang, don't fight. Let's go ahead and bring this macro out by going to compendium in the top right and typing in recall knowledge with workbench installed. It looks like a dice with a target around it. Drag it out to your macro bar and let's start using it. Oh, and don't forget to assign this macro to your players like the other ones. So, when a player hits the recall knowledge macro, this is what they see. They see this because it's a secret role. They don't get anything but this. You, as a GM, though, see everything. This is what you see as a game master. Every single recall knowledge skill and the base role. This does look kind of ugly, though, so we're going to change the setting here real quick. Let's go to settings, configure settings, workbench. We're going to go ahead and don't show any extra modifiers. Hit the recall knowledge macro again. That looks much better. I like that. I use the recall knowledge macro for when I'm trying to request the investigate exploration activity for my players. Another good use of the recall knowledge macro is have the player target an enemy. Then when they hit the macro, they should see, well, that at the top of the screen, but what you as a GM see is whether they met the monster's recall knowledge DCs or not. So whether they succeed or fail, it tells you the first, second, and third attempt. This macro is the ideal way of using recall knowledge in combat. It saves you so much time. And remember, recall knowledge is crucial for knowing an enemy's weakness or resistances or whatever. Macro number three, effect, cover. Believe it or not, cover is going to come up more often than you think in Pathfinder 2E, especially lesser cover. Same as the previous macros, you need to go to the top right and find it under the compendium. Type in effect cover. It's got a black and white shield icon. You can drag it out and no need to hand this one out to your players, to be honest. The best way to use it? Well, let's say it's Marisha's turn in combat and she needs to attack the skeleton. She targets the skeleton, but as the line goes through Valeros, it means that the skeleton has lesser cover. So just pop the macro and then on the pop-up, click on the lesser cover and there you go. The skeleton's AC will automatically be changed for you. Cover comes up a lot, especially with ranged combat, so keep this macro handy for both players and NPCs. Other examples of cover include, if you move Marisil behind this wall, she could possibly have standard cover against the skeleton's ranged attacks. She could even have 
greater cover if she takes cover as an action. And this macro also allows her to take prone cover if she's prone, which gives her plus four AC against ranged attacks. Taking cover is underutilized in Pathfinder, so make sure you use that action every once in a while. And it'll be super useful in Starfinder too. Macro number four, generate check prompt. You know how in Adventure Paths it gives you the ability to set up a DC skill check and then have your players roll it and then it tells you whether they succeeded or failed? This macro allows you to do that without having an AP handy. We're going to find it in the compendium by typing in generate check prompt or just generate should be fine. You'll see it right there. Just drag it out. This macro is GM only. Do not hand this out to your players. Now, let's say, for example, this is not in the beginner's box AP, but Valeros really wants to lift this rubble here. We can select Valeros and click on generate check prompt. Now we have a couple of options here. Let me run you through each one. We can set a prompt title here. For example, we can call it lift the rubble. We can set a DC, we can decide to set a DC arbitrarily, like 20, and then just the difficulty if we need to, and then make him roll in athletics. We'll generate the prompt and it's on the bottom right here. We can also do a simple DC based on the environment, so we could still, we could say it's really easy rubble, so we'll just do a 15 and it'll show it the DC here, or we could do a level based DC, Valeros is level 1, so it'll let and maybe it's easy to lift this rubble, so it'll generate an easy level base DC. It, it really depends on how you want to do it. You can also set up lures for a skill check regarding lures. And now just have your player click the button in chat and it'll roll athletics for him and even tell you if he succeeds or fails. In this case, he succeeded. Generate check prompt is good for those intense moments where you want the player to know if they succeeded or failed with a check. Sometimes it's funner having them see the critical failure message in chat rather than you telling them they messed up horribly. Or even a critical success, whatever floats your boat. Macro number five, earn income. You know the deal, right? Go to the top right, type in earn income and drag the macro out. This one does need to be assigned to your players, so hopefully you know how to do that by now. Earn income is ideally done when your players are in town and have weeks of downtime. You also can't escape the soul-crushing grind that is work in a TTRPG, it seems. To use this macro, you select a token. Uh, your players ideally select their own token and then they choose what they want to earn income with. They choose the level of the earn income and then they choose how many days they want to earn income with. That's it. Then you click on the button and roll. It does the calculations automatically, and we can see for seven days, Valerus failed and only earned 56 copper. So we're gonna have to add that manually to his character sheet. It does not add it automatically. There you go. That's it. Those are the five macros I promised you in this video. If you liked the content you saw, consider giving me a like and a subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Stay tuned for more macros or even modules video.